let's take a look at today's business headlines for help with that. Let's then bring in business and markets analyst and Newsmax contributor Seth Denson. Good morning, Seth. Hey, Allison. Good to see you this morning. Great to see you. All right, let's start with the markets. Both the Dow and the S&P dropping a bit more yesterday. This morning, futures are slightly up as investors brace themselves for a big Fed rate hike this week. All right, Seth, let's recap what's affecting our viewers right now. I feel like every time we talk, there's more problems when it comes to the economy. Gas prices, they continue to rise. In states like California, drivers are paying about $6.43 a gallon. Store shelves are still bare. Parents still struggling to find baby formula. And now the latest issue affecting women in this country in particular is a tampon shortage. Add to that lettuce shortage, chili pepper shortage, which is leading to the suspension of production of one of the country's most beloved condiments, sriracha. I actually, my daughter loves that, so I did make sure I got a couple bottles. Seth, this conti we continue to see shortages of food, shortages of supplies that people need, essentially some to, you know, obviously baby formulas being one of those top ones. Yeah, and you know, Allison, as inflation continues to be out of control and gas prices where they are, I would tell viewers, don't expect things to change uh, on the macro level, maybe on the micro level, meaning that one specific product may be coming back online or something of that sort. But from a macro perspective, a broad perspective, i.e., uh, things are going to be like this. This is what we call the bullwhip effect. And here's what happened. I mean, listen, in 2020, we shut down the economy. And I don't know if you remember, but in 1998, I had a Windows computer yes. that I could shut off real quick. But when I push that button to start that sucker back up, it took some time. That's effectively what's going on with the economy. And when you couple that with the monetary structure that we have going on, high gas prices, labor challenges, all of this means supply chain challenges. We've been talking about it now for a year, mm. and it's not going away anytime soon. Yeah, no, that's definitely not good news. You know, we're hearing a warning of a recession, and also the Fed's expected to increase those rates, those interest rates. Seth, we've talked about this before, and you've said, look, even if they do that, that's not enough. But let's talk a little bit about the housing market. How will this interest rate affect people who want to buy homes, people who want to sell homes? Because we're already seeing that bubble may be bursting. Two of the biggest names in real estate announced layoffs yesterday. What, what are we going to look for? Yeah, I mean, the housing market is an interesting one to watch, and, and, and certainly the, there's still an appetite to buy. The challenge is you still have first-time home buyers who are having the hardest time. People in that second tier, we'll call it, you know, maybe second-time home buyers, uh, if you're selling your home, you're having a bigger time trying to get it sold. Some of those in that first-time home buyer market are still there. But here's the reality for buyers. You're buying the same price house that may, or the same house that the price may have gone down, but you're actually going to be paying more when it comes to your mortgage rate. Yeah. I mean, for every half a point on mortgage rate, or every full point, I should say, that's a that that's a significant payment. Sometimes five hundred thousand dollars a month more that you're now going to be paying in mortgage that is not going towards the equity of the house, rather George, just towards borrowing the money. So we are seeing a shift in the market. It's not as much a buyer's or a seller's market as it once was, but the market is going to start slowing down. Now, this is going to be pocketed in certain parts of the country, so certain places like Texas and some of these others, well, they're still going to see uh, a, a more robust market, but it is slowing down regardless. Yeah, I don't know how people can afford that $500 to $1,000 more a month when they're already paying an average of $377 a yeah. month for gas and, and food. All right, another industry reacting to its decline in Wall Street with layoffs, the crypto industry, specifically Coinbase. Yeah, if only somebody was out there talking about crypto saying, hey, guys, this may be a fad. Let's maybe back off. Bitcoin specific specifically has lost 70 percent of its value over the last eight months. Now, when money was flowing like water and we had so much of it in circulation and things were going great, it's easy to play with that. But that's exactly what you're doing. And unfortunately, things like Bitcoin and all of these mini cryptocurrencies, which actually aren't coins and they're not currencies, they're people behind typewriters or I know I'm going to get mean tweeted. They're computers <laughs> that are generating this funny money. Money, right. Um, the reality is it's not. And when I need to go fill up my car with gas, what am I going to do? I, I'm not going to pull out my Bitcoin wallet. I'm actually going to need to pull out cold, mm. cold, hard cash. And so, yeah, crypto uh, Coinbase, which manages a lot of these transactions, is seeing the writing on the wall in this and they're starting to cut jobs. Mm, yeah, uh, obviously, it's still very confusing to me still. All right, let's talk about, we actually just had a guest on uh, earlier and he talked about the cost of airfare, right? Domestic flights yeah. have gone up uh, significantly over the course of the last year, raising 47% since January. You know, I, I heard a couple of years ago, you book a flight on Tuesday and that's when you get the best deal, but what should people do? I mean, are these prices gonna keep going up with the cost of fuel? 
Yeah, I think you've got a couple things working at you, right? So the airlines are still not back to full capacity from a perspective of how many flights they're running. So there's fewer flights available. That's staffing shortages on their end. Plus fuel prices means that they're raising prices on airfare. We had to cancel one of our summer trips this year because we looked at the airfare and quite frankly just made the decision this isn't feasible. So listen, tip to Americans as you're starting to look at this, maybe this is the year to try to look around your area and say, hey, can we do a staycation? Mm -hmm. Hotel prices are up too, they're up about 15%, but that's not nearly as much as fuel and yeah, all these other things. Absolutely. So maybe that staycation, not St a bad idea. Staycation isn't bad. Take some time, shut yeah. your phone off, get off the grid. All right, exactly. Seth, Seth Denson, great to have you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Allison. Of